One of the basic principles of the Dharma is that the mind comes first, in two senses of the term. One is the mind is the most important thing in your life. The state of your mind it has to come first in all your considerations. When you think about what you're going to accomplish in life, the greatest accomplishment is, as the Buddha said, to have victory over your mind. In other words, have victory over the defilements. Because victory here means that you come out with true happiness. The pleasures, the types of happiness offered by the world, are not really satisfying. You work and work and work and try to get them as you go through life, and then they leave you, or you leave them. And as one of the Dharma summaries says, the world offers no shelter. No matter how much you can set things up to be just so, just right, they can't guarantee anything. So you've got to look to the mind inside for any foundation, any solidity, any certainty in life. So as you choose what to do with your life, you always want to think about what does this do for the mind. You can think about the different perfections that the Buddha talks about. He didn't give the list of perfections himself, but the perfections are drawn from his teachings. Generosity, virtue, renunciation, discernment, persistence, endurance, truthfulness, determination, goodwill, equanimity. Try to develop these qualities as you go through life because you can take them with you, and they will provide a good place to go. They do offer some shelter, When you can't depend on the world, you have to learn how to depend on the mind. So you've got to make the mind dependable. This is one of the reasons why we meditate, to train the mind in its powers of mindfulness, alertness, ardency. To learn to keep something in mind, hold it in mind. Things that are important to know. Sometimes you hear that each moment should be approached as something new, without any anticipations at all. But the Buddha saw that every moment has a certain structure. And this is the second way in which the mind comes in first. Even before you pick up on sensory input outside, the mind has certain things going on already. We tend not to notice that, but the Buddha is calling our attention to that. He says the mind is the forerunner of all things. Everything you experience comes from the fact that the mind is already moving out to see and hear and smell and taste and touch, think about things. In other words, what you bring to experience is going to have a huge impact on how, how that experience is shaped and then what you're going to experience as a result. So you want to train the mind in ways of thinking and paying attention, developing intentions. That will lead to happiness. In other words, you train the mind in the things that you will keep on bringing into experience. So we meditate to train ourselves in these skills. Part of the meditation lies in developing right view. And a large part of right view is just that point. They would look at what you're bringing to the experience. You want to be very clear about that, because it'll make the difference between whether you're going to suffer from the experience or not. Because the experience is also composed of things coming in from your past actions. And you don't have much control over what's going to ripen at any one time, the images of seeds in a field. Every time you have an intentional action, you plant a seed. 
and the seed get, gets watered, and it will sprout at some point. If the seed is sweet, the Buddhist example is of a grape, you get grapes. If it's bitter, you get bitter melon. But if you're a good cook, you can make good food even, even out of bitter melon. So we're learning the skills that we need to bring to our experience. And we start with the breath. This is one of the fabrications, as the Buddha calls it. In other words, one of the intentional elements we bring to our experience. Try to get really sensitive to how you breathe. Most of our lives we are interested in other things. The breath gets pushed into the background, goes on automatic pilot. And as a result, we don't get as much out of it as we could. So now as we meditate, we're learning to be more sensitive to this dimension of our experience. And the more you get sensitive to the breathing and its impact on the body, the more you see that it's going to have an impact on the mind. And you can adjust the breath, work with the breath energies in the body. So they have a good impact. And so you're priming yourself to be aware, but at the very least, what you're bringing with the body. Because the body is where emotions get lodged. A thought comes through the mind. And it's not just a thought. It, it goes deep. It digs into something in the mind. Hits a nerve. And your breath changes. Say, anger comes. It's going to hit the way you breathe. And then the way you breathe is going to have impact on the hormones in the body and the way you feel the body. And sometimes you get to the point where you can't stand the sensation of how the body feels while you're angry, and you've just got to get it out of your system. And for most of us, the way we get it out of the system is unskillful. We start saying things and doing things that we later regret. Well, if we don't regret them, sometimes we go into denial about the harm we've done, neither of which is very good. So it's good to learn an alternative skill. You breathe through the tension, breathe through the distorted breath, iron things out, smooth things out. So at the very least, the body doesn't get hijacked by the anger. And then you look at the way you talk to yourself, what the Buddha calls directed thought and evaluation. Here again, when we're meditating, we're going to be very clear about what are you saying to yourself right now, because it's going to make the difference between whether you're here or not. The breath is always here, but your mind can focus. It says it has a different focal length. It can be focused right here at the present moment and very quickly get focused years away, miles away. It all has to do with what you're talking to yourself about. A sensation comes in the body and something in the mind says, oh, this is a thought about X, and then it runs with it. Well, change what you say. Just say, this is a sensation in the body. And it could turn into thought, but I don't want it to turn into thought. I want to stay right here with the breath and see what other voices come up in the mind. They get frustrated. Say, well, I want to think about this. I want to think about that. Say, nope, not right now. You begin to see there's a lot of dialogue going into the mind. So you want to bring the voice of knowledge, the voice of awareness, particularly awareness of the tricks that your greed, aversion, and illusion can play on you. And as you're focusing on the breath, talking to yourself about the breath, your knowledge about these things will then get lodged in the breath. That will become your reminder. When unskillful thoughts come up, you can remind yourself, okay, one of the ways of undercutting them is to turn around and look at the breath again. Drop whatever that frame of reference was and re-establish yourself with the frame of reference here at the breath. Then there are the images you hold in mind. Those sometimes lie behind the dialogue. What pictures do you hold in mind as you approach an experience? You anticipate certain things are going to happen. Okay, there will be an image in the mind. What is that image? Is it going to be useful? 
So you're going to be approaching someone you know is difficult. And the, the only image you have in mind is that I can't do this, I can't do this. Help, help, help. Then you're going to lose it. You hold in mind the image. I'm capable. I've had, handled situations like this before. You can come with a lot more confidence. And be less likely to pale at the first difficulty. Because one of the things you want to learn here as you meditate is that you are capable. This is something you can do. You have a skill under your belt. And you can bring this skill out. When you're talking with difficult people, stay with the breath. At the very least, make sure the breath is comfortable. And that way you can handle the situation a lot more easily. So you come to every situation well-grounded. You know what you're bringing. Because this is one of the things that makes life so uncertain is that we come to situations and we're not really f fully cognizant of what we're bringing to the situation. Our focus is someplace else. If you know you're bringing skills with the breath, skills with how you talk to yourself, skills with how you picture things to yourself, what feelings you're going to focus on, you can come with a lot more confidence. And this has to do with situations not only outside, but also in the mind as well. Greed, aversion, and delusion can come up at any time. And they have their tricks. Well, you've got your skills. You can, at the very least, establish a handle on the situation in the present moment so you don't get blown away by the unskillful thought. You may not be able to drive it out of the mind, but you don't have to submit to its power. And once you see that you can do that, then you realize that what you bring to the situation is probably the most important set of skills that you can learn. And this is precisely what the meditation is for. It tra trains you on that level of prior to the sensory contact, what you're bringing. Because right now there's not much sensory contact going on. Just the your body on the on the floor or on a chair. The sound of the crickets in the background. You can even see the mind as it deals with something very si simple, like how do you stay with the breath? Then you learn how to do this in a way that things are not going well, you don't get frustrated. You just keep coming back, coming back. And you've got to know the mind a lot better. As the Buddha said, when you deal with breath meditation, you're going to learn about the directed thought and evaluation, what they call verbal fabrication, and perceptions and feelings, what they call mental fabrication. All these things are going to appear right here. As you get to know them, then as you go through the world, you're bringing knowledge with you. Knowledge enables you to keep the mind in first place, in both senses of the word. Otherwise you don't forget the fact that what you're bringing to the situation is the important element. That's under your power. That's a skill you can work on. And you're doing this for the sake of the well-being of the mind. So always remember that the mind comes first, and it means two things, but they go together. And then you're safe wherever you go.